This video is specifically going to relate to taking control over your sharpness and um, enhancing the image and uh, manually smoothing out some of the areas in case the panel doesn't really give you exactly what you're looking for. All right, so the first thing that I want to mention here really quickly is that um, this image is provided to us by Greg Thomason. He did a great job on this, in this uh, portrait um, and his headshot work is incredible. I want to thank him very much for this image that we can demonstrate on. Um, I have already gone ahead and run Infinite Skin. And you can see I've softened up the texture a little bit before I'm going to retouch. And this is a very generic number. This is not what I necessarily would use for everything. But um, if you do want to change something, just you can manually override it here. However, let's say that you already on your lightest setting um, and you kind of, let's say that you like something like this for the most part, except maybe that you wish there was more texture on the face. Well, there's two ways in order for us to, to recover that texture detail. And number one is anytime you draw on the mask, do not forget that you can simply hit the black color um, using the brush tool and just bring it back. I mention this because even when I teach dodging and burning, um, I, I, I find it interesting because if I ask people, I say, if you go too far when you're dodging, what do you do to bring it back? And they're like, I'm going to burn on top of it. I'm like, no, make sure you go to your mask and then just swap the color and paint with black and it'll just go back to the original state. Okay. So always remember um, black and white is your best friend. However, there's another level to this. Let's just pretend I, I go back to what it was before and um, I have the entire area white. This is just a very general mask, by the way. Don't judge it too hardly. But let's say that I've done some other work in here, which I'm going to do as well. And I, I still want to bring back the texture. How do I do it? Well, simply put, if you come over to this clarity layer here, this clarity layer is kind of like the magic sauce that will, um, you know, reduce texture, increase texture. You can come over to the clarity section. Um, you can then add a mask, a white mask to it. And then you can paint black on wherever it is that you would like more detail. And that's just a, a little quick hack here. And uh, this is this might not be accessible or useful for most people, but you can see this is um, without me using the mask. And then this is me with using the mask. This is also really good if you want to bring back maybe um, more detail to things that you didn't even kind of, you know, adjust. But that wouldn't make sense because then this mask wouldn't work uh, because you didn't paint over those areas as well. So don't disregard what I said over there. This won't work for that. This will specifically work for areas that you want to bring back um, any texture of the skin specifically, like in specific areas. Um, that have already been affected by infinite skin. So that's one thing. Another thing here is let's say that, you know, maybe you like the amount of smoothing that happened generally, but you'd like to continue it further in specific areas. Maybe this part of the eye needs a little bit more smoothing, right? But you don't want to use this slider here because then it's going to affect the whole face. So what do you do? Well, very simply, you're going to click on smoothness B. Regardless what these opacities are, you're just going to click on them, the top one, not the bottom, smoothness B, and then you're going to add a layer right here in the middle. And I'll just call this smooth just for, just for fun. And because these two layers here are independent, I can't just use this by itself or just use it by itself because sometimes based on your settings here, they could both be at a certain percentage. So if I just use one, and this is only like at 20% and you start brushing on it, it might not go as far as you want. So I'm just going to put a layer on top here in underneath details. You can see it's kind of sandwiched between the two. And if you've ever taken any of my retouching classes, then you'll know kind of what I'm going to do here. And that's basically take my brush tool and then take my flow of 2%, my hardness of 0%, and my opacity at 100%. Okay? And just in case, go to your color picker tool here and the top left, make sure it says three by three or five by five. I'm going to stick to five by five. 
and sample current and below. This will just ensure that the color picker is going to actually pick the color that you think it's going to pick. Okay, nothing else. Now I'm going to go back to my brush tool, come over here, use a brush size that's equivalent to kind of what I'm going to be blending. And this goes back to kind of like makeup principles. And you want to make sure that you obviously are using a size of the brush that's equivalent to the area. I don't want to use something like this because it's going to make little pencil lines, right? And I don't want to use something like this because it's going to cover the entire face. So logically speaking, you kind of want to be somewhere closer to this, like almost like the size of the transition. I think that's a good way of putting it. And then what I'll do is sample a color like this, depending if I want to enhance the highlights or if I want to bring the, the um, what's it called here? The foundational color in, the contouring color, the blush color. And I'm simply just going to go a few strokes with 2% flow. And, and what happens, you can see it, it fades in other colors too now. So you can determine specifically how far you would like to go in individual areas. Like maybe for here, you're like, oh, maybe I should take it a little bit further. You can do that this time. However, I would encourage you to maybe just finish the rest of your retouching first, like your healing and cloning first um and dodge and burn first before you do this because if you do this now okay what's what's going to happen is as you see here it might go too far so what i recommend as a tip number one is only do the bare minimum at the moment you don't have to do everything because the typical workflow is you would hopefully heal and clone first um run infinite skin or use infinite skin as a primer like to soften up the texture generally and then heal and then you want to do your dodge and burn um, or frequency separation at that time individually, okay? Because if you try and do it now, if you try and go across the entire image now, you're going to change the entire structure of the face, okay? So don't say I didn't warn you. But again, this is specifically for small areas that you wish you might want to fix now, but you don't have to. Um, but it's just good to know. Because maybe some people might use infant skin at the end of everything. Because I have um, our friend Olga, who Olga Tinyanin, who's a great uh, photographer all around and an inspiration to me. And she says that she likes to use it at the end to have a little, to like a little punch at the end, you know, so you can you can do your um, infinite skin as well as frequency separation at the same time. So that's another uh, way to go about that. So and. If you like a third suggestion, you could totally save infinite skin um, after your dodge and burn. So maybe you do healing first, dodge and burn first, and then run infinite skin um, as a way to kind of soften up the tone and texture as well as use this method to kind of blend transitions. So it's completely up to you on when you want to use it, but those are the pros and cons and the downfalls about why you should and shouldn't use it at different times. But yeah, to recap, I have a blank layer here in the middle underneath details to smooth things out a little bit more if you want to. And then if you want to reduce the sharpness of areas that you've already brushed on using infinite skin, come over here to the uh, mask or add a mask to the clarity layer and then paint with black to bring back uh, sharpness and uh, clarity and detail. There you go. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more, check out our page at Infinite Tools. There's a lot more to go. Um, and I think you're going to enjoy it, learn a lot from it. Um, if you have any questions, check those out. And please join our community at Infinite Tools. You will also see, you will also see our um, social icons to join our groups and uh, get involved and showcase your work. We'd love to hear from you. And if you found this tool useful, please um, tell us. And we'd love to, to see what you're up to and to promote your work into our audience.